Okay, so um, welcome again to the uh, the Zoom room. Take two of this uh, session. So um, well done, Lynn, on doing that pretty tough exercise. Thank you. Let's go into some practice for today then. Okay, so share my screen again. All right, so take two on this. Um, let's start with the um, the headline quote we read. So, um, yeah, I'll learn if you can read that again. See if anything shifted compared with an hour ago, whenever you read it. For vengeance is an emptiness, and he that seeketh it wasteth himself. A lot has changed hmm. because I I didn't realize when I read that it, it it was the coldness and that's what the emptiness it's the emptiness my heart was just empty felt felt empty mm. no it doesn't no it feels it's not feel... quite full mm. it still feels a little bit delicate but it's um. It's like it's re refilling because I mm. re I literally felt warmth in it when mm. we were saying the the phrase mm. "I am love." So I know mm. I'll just keep saying that now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Normally, how... say I'm perfect, whole, and complete. If I'm feeling bad for whatever reason, I'll say I'm perfect, whole, and complete, and that just doesn't. Just doesn't work sometimes. Doesn't, doesn't doesn't have the same no power. It's funny just how one word, you know. The, the, remember the essence of oneness is simplicity. Yeah. The simpler it is, the the more powerful it is. The more you're getting into that unit unity state that all of these words point us. Oh, complete and perfect, or whatever. There's there's too many words going on. Yeah. The I am I am love is so simple you can't miss it, you can't forget it. It just undoes the all of that um, egoic anger. What the what this um, quote's talking about is anger, vengeance, which is the ego's. Possibly the ego's most powerful answer to love, because it's so strong. <clears throat> you know, anger is a very strong emotion. Yeah. So we go into anger, and it it denies love, and the ego says, "Oh, that anger feels good. That anger is powerful." We've seen in human history people who go into anger and they use it as a weapon. Uh, can do. You know they build power for themselves in this world, but it's it's massively destructive. Yeah, it is. So, um, a good example of that would be um, someone like Hitler. You know, just a very angry man, really went into the anger, juiced it for all it was worth, made himself into um, you know the head of a country, and was trying to take over the whole world. Literally, and um, but in the end, anger is self destructive. So, what happened? <clears throat> it all came crashing down the whole world. He attacked the world, and then the world attacked him. That's how anger works. Yeah, in the end, you're the most wanted man in the world. Everyone's coming for you in a, in a very lonely, isolated place. You know, he and his, his um, 
wife or mistress. I can't remember what she was. Eva Brown <clears throat> eventually are in this in this bunker. You know, the Allies are closing in on Berlin, and he has to take his own life because there's no there's no other choice. Well, he could have he could have faced the faced the music. I suppose maybe that would have been the more enlightened choice. But <clears throat> his ego was like, okay. <clears throat> just kill yourself because that's actually what he's wanted all along it was all a death wish being enacted so you yeah. project it out onto others but actually it's your own your own um self self uh punishment that's going on in the end that brings you to death so very instructive and i'm using that extreme example because a good example of someone who gave himself over to anger and vengeance. He that seeketh it wasteth himself. In the end, what did it what did it lead to? Complete despair, life for him. No yeah. no. Had all this you know illusory power, but it all evaporated. So it's a you know it's a good illustration that you can't you can't build anything on that kind of foundation. And Yesha makes the point that you may think that vengeance is too strong a word for the seemingly minor frustrations, irritations, and grievances that arise from time to time in your mind. We all have them. But as yesterday's workbook lesson stated, a slight twinge of annoyance is nothing but a veil drawn over intense fury. So be aware of even the slightest irritation because this is a sign that you still have deep-seated anger that needs to be released. And if you can get into that anger and you realize that it is fury, that's quite helpful. I've, I've been feeling it. Literally, I've been standing in fields. I felt oh. it come up thinking, I feel angry, and then fe thinking, no, I'm furious. <laughs> rage, yeah. Yeah, absolute rage. And, mm. and yeah, that's so uncomfortable because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. I'm standing mm. out in, in where I, I love to be, you know, in a lovely place. Mm. Oh, but anyway. Yeah, but it, it, it's yeah, you know, what you're realizing it's got nothing to do with the place. It's all a, it's all yeah. a, what's going it's on in me. your mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's on you. So you take yourself wherever you are, there you are. I mean, that's a sort of self evident statement. <laughs> but it's very profound. You know, you take your ego wherever you go with you so you can try and escape it on the level of form by going to different places having different experiences but it goes with you wherever you are and you can be in the most beautiful place and you can be utterly miserable because your inner state makes it so for you and you can be in you know in a in a in, in, a, in a really awful place on the level of form and you can be peaceful and happy yeah. Flip side to it's very, very humbling. Um, I've, I've never been to India, but I've been to poor places in Africa. Um, and you just see, you know, that people are, even though they don't have a lot, there's, there's joy. They can be living in apparently really quite dire circumstances. And yet, they're still able to laugh and smile and be quite joyful and carefree. And then, you know, the flip side of that, you can get someone who has everything materially, <clears throat> movie star, rock star, I mean, these celebrities are always good examples, and they can be in the depths of despair and then kill themselves. Yeah. As have many. You know? Just think of a few, Amy Winehouse, Robin Williams, um, Whitney Houston, who didn't commit suicide, but she just, you know, overdosed on drugs. So it's the same thing. Yeah. You have everything shocking. materially. Yeah, you have everything materially, and yet you're empty. Or you have nothing materially, and yet you can be full of the spirit. Yeah. So to help you understand this anger and how to undo it more deeply, uh, listen to the recorded discussion that I put in here. Um, it's pretty interesting, if I recall. Started off with 
someone mentioning she was frustrated that day because she couldn't get into a computer. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> and complete the exercise required for another online course she was doing at the time. It's more by saying that frustration or any other negative emotion that arises an opportunity for us to become aware and then let, let, let go of another layer of the ego's thought system. That's all it is. It's just, it's just that anger arising again so that you can <laughs> keep it. And so, you know, that's, that's probably why you've been having IT issues as well. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah so obvious hmm. it's weird because i can i can access some things but then the, th hmm. the things like cre the where i need to go into create my website trying to log on to here on these calls hmm. and also yeah. into a, a site where i transfer my pictures over so all the things hmm. i i love the most and I, I i feel like i need the most i've not been able to get into them so again it's like i'm, I'm blocking myself <laughs> i know i am yeah. well, what, watch what watch what happens now you know you've done a major unblocking here go yeah. and do the exercises and use this this uh, essence statement repeatedly over the next few days to really entrench it and see what happens yeah, yeah and well, if ever you face those blocks start off with okay let's go to first principles the nice thing about the I am love statement is it is it cuts through everything and it goes right to the very essence of your identity and and that's where the whole problem lies. So in those three simple words, you cut through all of the ego's BS and you just go to the very core of what will work to your core identity, which you've denied. That's why it's yeah. so powerful. And then at that level, once the transformation happens at that level it starts to radiate out into other levels so let's look at uh internal model actually that's what i wanted you change your mind fundamentally on the internal level thoughts emotions memories you change your self-concept your core belief about yourself that has to have an impact in the seemingly objective world of what you experience in the objective world with your physical senses because they connect and then you start seeing these changes show up in your life and you go oh well i don't know how, i don't know how that happened suddenly miraculously your computer fixes and you can go visit sites that you couldn't before and so on because you did the work internally and then the external is the effect, not the cause. That's the that's the key point. Yeah. This is cause and this is effect, not the other way around. If you make the external world into cause and this into effect, it's upside down. The other day, you know, Karen said, Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Brain, mind, it's all the same. I said, No, 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 no. Because it's a massive difference. If you make the if you make yourself into a brain and a body, you've just inverted cause and effect. And you said, no, it's not my mind that's that's causative. It's now my brain that's controlling me. It's my brain and my biochemistry. Now I'm at the effect. My thoughts and emotions are an effect of my brain and my biochemistry. It's a disaster. Well, I'm a victim of the body then, and my body reacts to external stimuli, so... But of course, I'm just going to react. And then I'm a victim of the world. So massive, subtle, but m massively profound distinction. Do you see that? Yeah. Because if you claim your true power and say, no, it's all my mind. And my brain and my body's biochemistry are effects, not causes, of my inner state, of my thoughts and my emotions. And I have the power to change those irrespective of what's going on in the brain and the biochemistry. Yes, once I've done this and I do this over and over, there's a pattern and then it can feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually being controlled by my body. It's my, it's the chemicals in, my, in the brain that are controlling me because I've triggered those chemicals so often that now, you know, I, I, I have a default state. But that's not true. You can change your mind. It's harder when you've got a deep-seated pattern, no doubt, but you can, because in the end, it's just thought and emotion, and you're in control of that. You can you can make a different choice. 
And then that starts to change the biochemistry. It starts to change the wiring of the brain and the body's biochemistry as you make those different choices. So the idea that you're a mind and not a brain is massively empowering. And the idea that you're a brain and a body is massively disempowering. And we just have to see that. Yeah, and no, then make our choice accordingly. So, okay, well, what do I choose to be? If, I, if I'm a body and a brain, I must be a victim of the world. And my body is inevitably going to die. It's, it's, it's very fragile and frail and weak, and it's subject to old age and sickness and ultimately death. Well, if I believe that's me, then what a disastrous self-concept. The self-concept that comes from that is, is the victim identity. So you can see how it's all bound up. It's yeah. a thought system. That's why Yeshua's was teaching us a complete thought system. And he's saying, if you accept some of it, then you have to accept all of it. If you accept a little bit of the ego, you have to take the whole lot because it all goes together. You accept you're a, a brain and a body. That, that uh, means you have to accept everything that goes with that. And the guilt, the sin, the fear, the attack thoughts, the vengeance, the sickness, the death, all of it. And that's what he's trying to teach us. Okay, this is an all or nothing deal. You can't have a little bit of it. Oh, well, I'll just have a little bit of that belief system. It'll be all right. It's like saying, well, I'll just have a little bit of cyanide and I'll be all right. No, you won't. It's a killer. It's going to kill you. It's going to poison. It's going to poison you and ultimately kill you. So he's asking us to see that very clearly and say, okay, this entire thought system has to be removed. It's got to go in its entirety. He says, I will, you will accept this course entirely or not at all. Uh, you accept that you love or you deny that you love. That's, that's, that's the, those are the choices. There's no in between. I am love or I'm not love, which is going to be. And each thought system is integrous to itself. If you believe you love, then that has a thought system that goes with it. And you're going to have a whole set of thoughts and emotions and perceptions that go with that, as demonstrated in this diagram. You know, I am love at the core foundation. You have a set a different belief about yourself, that you are love and that um, only love is true. And the thing, the derivatives of love, kindness, and happiness, and joy, and peace, these, you know, these become your thoughts, and those are the feelings you have, and then you perceive accordingly. Everything, the sensory inputs that you get from the external world are perceived according to that thought system, because perception is an inside job, not an outside job. It's all dependent on what you believe about yourself. That's what he's trying to teach us. Perception is, is not a function of the external world. Perception is a function of the state of your mind, and that's an, that's an inside job. If you believe that you're a separate self and you desire to maintain that, then you must believe that you're a victim of the world. The victim identity has various thoughts and emotions, none of which are pleasant. We've been through those. The anger, the fear, the anxiety, the confusion, the guilt, the sin, um, and so on, grief. Um, and then you perceive the world accordingly. Whatever whatever um, sense perceptions come in are interpreted according to this thought system. And you know what that does because you've been in a dark space yeah. for the last three months. Yeah. You're getting the sensory inputs, but it's very darkly perceived through the darkened glass of the ego, says Yeshua. The world is a darkened mirror which just reflects this inner darkness. And then you, you perceive everything in this dark uh, place. <laughs> dark place. Yeah. yeah. It feels dark internally. That's why we use the word dark. Yeah. It feels oh. limiting, dark, constricted, because it's an inside job. In, internally, you are believing in a false identity, and that ripples through your entire thought system into perception. And then every perception you have is colored in this darkness 
by that core belief. That's why it's so important to get to your core belief because it it flavors everything with its poison. And it's been doing that your entire life because this yeah. just is happening at a subconscious level. So it just filters through. And now what we've just done is we've cut through the levels. We cut through emotion and thought to the level of core belief. You turn that around and you got into the essence identity in one session of an hour. And you felt that. Yeah. And then you feel that warmth coming again. Well, that's the inner fire they talk about in spiritual teachings that comes from the truth. And that starts to warm the coldness and the emptiness of your of your of your mind. It warms yeah. it up and you start feeling like you know life is okay again. Because it radiates through and everything you perceive is now perceived with a from the perspective of an inner warmth that everything's actually okay. And no matter what seems to happen here, you can interpret it differently because you have this this inner connection to your source. That's the foundation. That's why he says it's the altar or the foundation of your life. That I am love is your essence identity. It lies at the very core of your true being and therefore of your true life. And that's why it's so powerful because when you say i am love you cut through all of this and you can go straight in there and you can feel that and yeah. cut through all the layers mm. that can take years to some people have been you know work, work working for years not getting to the core it's all it's all surface stuff well I'm like let's just cut to the chase and get to the core identity that you believe in it's weird though because i've known that for a long time i've known mm. that i didn't feel lovable i've known that for you know at least a couple of decades but mm. it's fascinating that whole another layer of it when i thought I'd, you know all the work i've done I've, mm. I've, I've cleared you know i've cleared loads of that cleared loads of that feeling and that belief away and then mm. with this new stuff that's been happening it's yeah it's, it's i know i can totally see it it's just brought mm. up a whole new level ready mm. to go <laughs> mm. it brings up you know that sometimes you need the crisis you need you need the, yeah. the conceptual level you need those triggers to really come in and start you know hitting you from all sides yeah. In order oh, yeah. to, to bring up that core belief that's dormant, that you weren't even aware was there, but it brings it up and now it comes through thought, emotion into perception, and you 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 know you experience it very strongly. Mm -hmm. It's not the external world that's the problem. That just triggered what was already within you yeah. to arrive and strong. Yeah. Which is all perfect in its imperfection, because now that you're aware of it. You can go and do the work to correct it. Yeah, I can heal it. Yeah. Heal it. That's the whole point. So the crisis is happening for you, not to punish you and hurt you. The crisis is happening to wake you up and free and bless you and heal you. And that's the perspective we've got to have. It's not always easy to see that when you're in it because the ego you know, is doing its best to get you to perceive it through the ego, ego's lens, isn't it? Oh, this is a disaster. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. What's happening to me? My life's collapsing. Oh, my God, I'm never going to cope. What's going to happen in the future? And on and on it goes. You know that. You know, you know I that do. Story. Yeah. Quite well. It's like go down the rabbit hole, get stuck in there, and it's just like a stuck record player. And the ego is very insistent on that because it 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 entrenches that core belief that you are not lovable, that you are not worthy of love, you're a victim. In fact, you're bad and sinful and evil and guilty and you deserve to be punished. And then you use life to punish you and you perceive in that way. And everything mm -hmm. then, it's a disaster. Of course, mm -hmm. of, how can you possibly be happy if you have that belief system? It's not possible. And then when you do actually get happy, it will come back up again and it's like no you don't deserve you don't deserve to be yeah. happy until you let go completely of that belief you yeah. have a little bit of temporary happiness and the ego goes no you don't really deserve that because remember mm -hmm. you're guilty you're bad yeah. yeah 
deserve to suffer, not consciously necessarily, but it can't stand too much happiness. So I think what was happening was way too much happiness for its liking. And, uh, and then it's okay. Well, we we're gonna we're gonna you know use the external world to create some serious challenges to trigger you to go back into into this dark thought system and and believe again in the ego. That's what that's what it does. It's just defense. It's defending itself against the truth. But when it does that, the beauty of this is it reveals itself. You see. The genius of the Holy Spirit is that, okay, bring it on then. Reveal yourself. Give, give me all you've got because you show me exactly what you are then. You reveal it in its, in its you know, full ugliness and, and awfulness and horror and all of it gets revealed. Okay, so you can no longer pretend then that it's all somehow okay. Oh, well, I'll just have a little bit of ego and I kind of need the ego in my life because it, it helps me get by and you know, manage my life. That's quite a common belief, isn't it? Even among spiritual people. Oh, we need a bit of ego, you know. Really? You want guilt and sin and fear and hatred and attack and sickness and death and misery and pain and suffering and on and on it goes. You really want that? Yeah. Really? So when you go deeply into the darkness, it's the perfect opportunity to let it go and go to the light. And then the Holy Spirit knows that. Okay, this is good. Bring it on. Because finally we're getting to the core of it. And if it gets so intense that you can't stand it anymore, then you've got every chance of awakening from it. Because you'll no longer tolerate it in your mind. So this thing, this awful entity has to go entirely it's game over that's I'm, I'm done with it which means of course there's no self-concept remaining lynn has to go lynn has to be lynn has to die in order for you to be reborn into the love that you truly are which is the whole point i remember when i was going through some you know pretty dark stuff 10 years ago and uh this voice comes up in my mind and says jesus john this stuff's going to kill you talking about the course in miracles and spiritual practice i was doing at the time so i heard the voice very clearly it was like it was like kind of but immediately there's a recognition the holy spirit went yeah but that's kind of the whole point <laughs> what did you expect <laughs> What, did you were going to go to enlightenment? Because I've been going for years. No, I want enlightenment. So what did you expect? You are going to go to enlightenment with your ego intact? Well, kind of, I suppose. You know, you haven't kind of got clear enough at that point to go, yeah, well, obviously. And I knew all the theory. Yeah, well, you die to the separate self and you're reborn in the spirit. And, you know, you, you talk the lingo. But like when it's actually happening to you, it's like, oh, my God, this is awful. I'm dying here. I feel like I'm my life's deconstructing and I'm dying and it's it feels horrendous. I mean the ego scrabbles to to try and get you back into its thought system. This is some sort of semblance of normality, doesn't it? Yeah. When actually you just gotta go, no, I'm just gonna go through the process. It's just it's all it's all gotta go. I'm just gonna let it all deconstruct and I'm gonna trust. It's where the faith and trust comes in. So so hugely, I have to trust that it's going to show me my way out. That it will show me how to find the light. I don't know how to find the light in my ego, but the Holy Spirit will, will show me. That's its function. So I don't have to know. I just have to be willing to know. That's all. Just have to be willing to keep showing up, keep doing the work, keep taking the next step. Tim, you mentioned your story, you know, of pedaling. It's just like, okay, it's tough, but one, one little rotation at a time, and I'll get up the hill. It's the same idea. Okay, I'll just keep, I'll keep going, and maybe tough, but one step at a time. I'm not going to quit. And that's why it's a hero's journey, because you have to find that courage within you and the persistence. 
to continue no matter what and say, okay, I will not be beaten by the ego. Yeah, it can come and it's going to do its thing and I might be tempted at times and I vacillate, but I will not be beaten. I will overcome. Because that's the will of God. You must. It's the it's the divine divine design of the universe. Every mind will overcome the ego and awaken to its true self. That is that is the universal master program of this matrix. So you can't fail, in other words. If that's the universal program, you can't fail ultimately. So your doubts and your disbelief are nothing. What did what did Morpheus say to Neo in the Matrix? You watched him on Saturday. When I could stay away, you got it. Remember when he did the jump? He said you have to let it all go, Neo. Doubt, fear, disbelief. You have to let it all go. Free your mind. And then he goes. And jumps over like a 50 meter gap and he was like whoa okay that's challenging because he still believes in the reality of the matrix so in the reality of the matrix that's not possible and what he's trying to do through the the the, the training is get him to believe in his true self that is not limited. He says, again, when he's, when he's training him, he says the agents, their power and their strength is based in a world of rules. That's why they'll never be as strong or as fast as you. And he says, well, what are you saying? That I can dodge bullets? No, he's saying when you're ready, you won't have to because you'll transcend the bullets just beyond it all. You don't have to dodge bullets anymore when you're the true self that's eternal. And again, you know, Neo is struggling to believe it all. He's like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying here. Free my mind. Okay. Free my mind. No problem. Free my <laughs> mind. <laughs> it's really well well demonstrated, isn't it? Because we can go, free my mind. Right. But he's he's so in the thought system of the ego that to just say free my mind is not that easy is it? because it, it's a it's a entrenched belief he's got so used to the matrix that um it takes a lot of a lot of work and a lot of experience to undo it that's why the you know the journey is experiential that's why you see his training is all experiential okay yeah operating programs all that do you remember the 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 operators say, oh, it's major boring stuff. We're not going to bother with that. All the theory. Let's just get to combat training. Let's take on the ego. And let's get to it. You know? <clears throat> so all all of all of the the dialogue. It's all it's all great messages. Yeah. Um, brilliant. I mean, that whole movie is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Just really, you know, brilliantly uh, inspired and channeled and then brought into manifestation as a movie as a as a teaching for those of the eyes to see as a, a teaching showing them what they are you are neo you are the one that's what the movie's saying to all of us you are that one the normal person living a seemingly you know pretty pretty ordinary life um controlled by a boss controlled by society but yet within you is this is this uh, essence of who you are that is not controlled by any of it. You just have to awaken to that power. And that journey of awakening to that essence of who you are is your life's journey. That's your hero's journey. That's your authentic path. That's your destiny. That's what you're supposed to do in this life. Yeah. Yeah. So you just took another step in that in that journey yeah. today. Well mm -hmm. And when you get the guidance, so something in you said tonight, you need to show up. Yeah. Yeah. You just knew. Okay. So yeah. you follow the guidance. Now you could have blocked that and gone, nah, you know, I'll just do whatever, I'll zone out on TV or I'll go, I'll go for a walk or I'll chase an Aurora or whatever. No, you could do any <laughs> of those. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can laugh at yourself. Yeah. Um, you, but you you chose to listen to the guidance and do, and, and go for it, and then look at what's happened. Yeah. So it's just a little willingness to say, okay, I'm willing to show up. I'm willing to follow the guidance. That's all that's required. How simple. You don't have to do massive. Just be willing to show up. Just listen to the little, still small voice that prompts you. It says, yeah, okay. You know, Lynn, you need to show up. You need to do that. Go there, do that. Speak to that person. Call that person. Take the next step. That's all it's saying. Take the yeah. next little step. And I'm with you. I will guide you. And of course, fear and the resistance blocks it. So the ego is always trying to come in and sabotage that. And go, no, 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 no. Get stuck. Fear, which keeps you paralyzed, which stops you from listening to guidance, which is the, the most dangerous thing you can do. But the ego tells you that that fear is protecting you. Completely insane. Yeah. But... Um, we have to nevertheless overcome it. And the most powerful way of overcoming it is what? I'm just giving it to you. How do you overcome that fear? Be mindful and present. No, just yes, yes. I mean that's not that's not incorrect. But I am love. Claim your identity. Yeah. I am present to what? Yeah to your true identity right now when you say i am love you're present to your essence identity you are claiming it so at the core here of prayer prayer is just an affirmation of your true identity so when most people go wrong with prayer they're praying to some force outside of them please god universal mind whatever you want to call it help me you know give me what i think i want but actually the most powerful prayer is the prayer that says, I am that I am. I am love. Because I'm claiming my true identity. It's an affirmation of who I really am. That's the, that's the prayer. Which is why they put it at the core here. And when you go to that level of claiming your essence identity, and letting go of the ego in the process, that's the miracle or the, the correction. It's so simple, isn't it? This is so, yeah. so simple. Beyond all the people say, oh, the course is so complicated and so difficult. No, 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 it's not really. It's so simple. But you've got to get through all the complexity and all the ego's defenses to, to understand the very... You know, simple, simple essence of it. It's amazing how we can so easily get in the way of it. Mm. Yeah, because we get caught at these higher levels. Not higher levels, actually lower levels, but exterior levels. We get caught up in perception and emotion and thought. And all of this can feel very real. And you get lost and confused. Him. This is like clouds. It's like a heavy cloud bank with layers. He even does a visualization, of course. He says, go through the clouds and go to the light within. There's this brilliant, brilliant white light at the core. Go through all the, all the clouds on the external level. So we get caught up in the clouds of our thoughts and our emotions based on our perceptions. And we forget that at the core, there is this identity, the truth of who we are that's not affected by those clouds. The same way as the sky is not affected by clouds at all. The sky is still there. You just can't always see it. It's obscured by the cloud patterns of your emotions and thoughts. But what this I am love does is it cuts through all of that into the very essence of who you are in three words. Wow. How... how how it's like taking a knife and just slicing through all of this in one go. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, I'll tell you in this context, there was a, a myth of the, the Gordian knot, Alexander the Great, um, 
was going out to do his conquering thing in Asia. And I think it was in Turkey or somewhere on the way. There was this this knot that had been around for a long time, centuries. It was like impossible. It was so complicated. It was like no one could undo it. And the prophecy was that whoever could untie the knot would conquer the world. So Alexander the Great just went with his sword and he cut the knot. <laughs> He doesn't bother with the untying. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of wisdom in that. He was actually he was actually uh, coached, mentored, taught by Aristotle. So I think he had a little bit of some kind of higher awareness, although obviously not enough to stop him wanting to conquer the world. Mm -hmm. but cut just cut through him, right in one blow. Slice through all of that of the ego, the emotions, the thoughts, the slices through all of that and gets to the core. I am love. The absolute truth about who you are in three words. That's why it's so powerful. So use it. It will be, sure. Yeah. Incorporate it into every spiritual practice you do because it's so short. It doesn't have to take a long time, just a few seconds. And you 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 bring in that idea and you say it out loud, I am love at the end of a meditation or a breath break. And you just drop into feel. feeling. It. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And every time you do it, you're reinforcing that's my identity. It's a prayer. That's the ultimate form of prayer. It's the prayer that says, I am that I am. Yeah. By the name of God in, in, in the Bible, uh, the first name of God given to Moses was I am that I am, because that's the prayer. When you when you claim your identity, when you say, I am that I am, I am love, you pray to God in the most powerful way. But that got lost, didn't it? It got lost in all of the religious misunderstandings about what God is and then God's some external figure and now we've got to pray to God for some kind of favor and, of course, fear that God's going to punish us because it's outside of us, but it's not. So the truth, the mystical truth, which actually isn't that mystical, it's actually just should be common sense, but it's not common, is is at the core of all of these religions that was the core of judaism developed from you know moses and his experience developed you know the religious and uh, the jewish religion at the very core of it the foundation of it was i am that i am the prayer of of the heart claiming who you are and everything else that came subsequent that was built around it and you know then they got very complicated with it and they did the torah which had 684 laws of conduct and you know, you, you you can't wear this this kind of clothing and you can't eat this kind of food and on and on and on it was all just the ego's complexity trying desperately to cover over that core realization that Moses had had in his mystic experience. I am that I am. So simple. And then Yeshua comes along within that religious tradition and just reminds them, look, actually, you guys have lost the plot. It's very simple. I am that I am. That's all. That's all you are. And I will demonstrate the power of I am that I am. I am love in my life, in my words, in my teachings, in the healing I did, uh, in, the, in the resurrection of the body from death. I'll demonstrate that so that you can see the power of that life essence that you are and he said you know you are this as well i have nothing that you don't have you'll do these things that i've done and even greater things because you're actually the same as me and then again christianity comes in and covers all that over and says no 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 no. let's make it all very complicated again and cover over the the simple truth and again two thousand years later comes a, a course in miracles to say okay that it's lost the plot, you've gone off track, but let's let's bring it back to the truth. 
So what we're living through is now that you know it's a, it's a the next revolution designed you know to awaken um, people from their sleep and all the misconceptions around uh, particularly Christianity that have um, evolved um, over the last two thousand years. All right. So any thoughts or comments or questions on any of that not for me okay thanks nothing from my side thank you mm -hmm. yeah good so um oh wait john said a lot of ego stuff had come up for him this was in the uh guided session since he started doing the course so that's common and he asked what the ego's goal in creating all this drama really is. To which I responded that its goal is always to miscreate and perpetuate its false identity in our minds and keep us separated um, from our true identity. As you discovered in, in the flipping and flop exercises, ultimately love. It's all it's trying to do is obscure that. Someone else, Debbie, um, said that we need to be continuously vigilant of our thoughts because when we aren't, it's very easy for the old ego promo programs that are often karmic and are usually triggered to arise in childhood to start taking control of our thoughts again. So it's watching. Okay, watch those thoughts. Watch the mind and correct, continuously correct it. You, you're starting to go out of I am love and you're going back into that old program, correct it. I am love, correct it. And then I shared a story um, about my own flop, Fundamental Life Operating Program. I remember that stands for, which is the core egoic belief. It was triggered. I was kind of, I wasn't vigilant enough. It was a family dinner a couple of days earlier. I remember the incident very clearly. And I went in and I hadn't, I think I was working and I was a bit late for dinner. And then my dad said something. And it just really got to me. And I mean, you know, Felt the anger arising, reacted, stormed off in a half, went, okay, done. I'm not going to have dinner. And then I reflected on it. I was like, hey, well, you know, <laughs> clearly there's still anger there. I can't uh, beat around the bush you know, and, and, and deny it that, you know, otherwise I wouldn't have been triggered. It wouldn't have mm -hmm. mattered. So these, um, you know, these, these things are there to teach us. It doesn't matter how special quote, spiritual, enlightened, we think we are, as long as we seem to be living in this world, we need to be vigilant of the ego and, and watchful, you know, watch our thoughts because it's frequently going to tempt us to believe in its thought system by continuously presenting us with these challenges. And in that case, it was my dad, it was a trigger, I wasn't prepared, it was like, and then it just, you know, reacted and reacted in anger and, um, you know, as a result, I excluded myself. I didn't have dinner with her. I just went, okay, enough. Uh, but, you know, on reflection, I was like, okay, well, I get it. I see. And uh, still some work to do. So you don't beat yourself up for these lapses. You just go, well, it's, it's, it's symptomatic that the ego is still there. And there's more work that's required to be done. And then we actually did the... Uh, name your game exercise as well help them identify as egos game or flop yeah so uh, that's was a nice session if i recall you might want to watch that how to be vigilant of the ego um you can listen to youtube or download the podcast or there's a meditation actually as well um and then interestingly i noticed a very interesting synchronicity remember is just a miracle by another name or a correction when i was mm -hmm. adding the backing tracks to the meditation so i was just doing this meditation and and for some reason in the backing track backing music track i chose made reference to john 316 i was like okay that's a bit weird why has it got a biblical reference in in the you know in the notes to the backing track um if you if you go into the to the um every track has a like 
meta tags kind of notes which most people don't don't look at but um when you when you uh creating these things it, it brings them up in the uh, yeah. software I used. so john 316 so i looked it up so okay what does john 316 say so let's get someone else to read that um but come i won't read it read it for god so loved the world for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. Uh, that Suddenly there's a biblical reference and quite a profound one. Um. So if you reinterpret that, you know, the traditional Christian interpretation of that is that there's only one son of God, and that's Jesus. Uh, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the traditional interpretation. But uh, reinterpret it with the Holy Spirit or remembrance of perfect love in a way that avoids the Christian terminology. Terminology. This could say, so let someone else read that. Um, Kim, why don't you read that? Perfect love so loved its extension. Perfect love, so loved its, its extension, and it gave its extension unconditional love, which when believed and accepted by everyone who is its extension will help everyone transcend death and experience eternal life. It's a very different interpretation, isn't it? Instead of there being one son who died to save us and had, apparently had to be sacrificed, to save us from our sins. This is saying perfect love itself gave us this perfect love or unconditional love. Whoever believes in this love, i.e. I am love, whoever claims the love is then saved and, and released to eternal life will help everyone transcend death and experience eternal life. That's what it really means. But, you know, you can see how that that interpretation gets covered over by a false interpretation that makes it into something special and makes it actually inaccessible to most people. Because if you think it's only Jesus, who's the one son of God, and only through believing in him do you have eternal life, what you do is you deny the love that you are, don't you? You don't claim it. You don't say, I am love. So, well, maybe Jesus was love, but I, I'm not Jesus. I'm not the only son of God. So I'm just some kind of, I don't know what I am anymore. Some 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 kind of, uh, you know, struggling believer trying to find the love of God, but, but it's inaccessible to me. So I've got to believe that Jesus can somehow give it to me. Something external to me can give it to me, and I have to be saved from my parents' sins by his sacrificial death. Uh, you know, I stated that way. That's the that's traditional Christianity explained in about a minute. Does it make any sense at all? Well, really, does it? Like, well, well, how does that make any sense? How is that helpful? So it was quite synchronistic or miraculous, depending on how you want to see it, given that John's name is John. <clears throat> it's not John Renaud, but it was another John. The essence identity discovered is love. And the final words of lesson 135 that I read in the meditation to close the session were. So someone read that. Um, let's ask Elaine to read that. I will not defend myself. Because the Son of God needs no defense against the truth of his reality. And if you translate that into alternative language. I will not defend myself because the pure form of awareness of perfect love needs no defense against the truth of its reality. Yeah, Son of God, just a slight correction, the extension of perfect love. Son of God is the extension of perfect love. 
So I'll not defend myself because the extension of perfect love, which is what I truly am, needs no defense against the truth of its reality. I.e., I don't need to defend myself against the truth yes. that I am. I just need to claim it. Which is exactly what you've just done. So, you know, you, you start seeing in, in all these religious teachings, you start seeing the essence of what it actually is, if you interpret it, of what they were actually trying to say, but which is what covered over by misinterpretation over thousands of years. So it's actually all the same. And this you know, very core transformational work we're doing is actually the very essence of what those religions were trying to effect in people's minds. They were trans they started off as transformational systems to transform people's minds and help them to connect with their source, which is love. And then they became, you know, dogmas and belief systems and, and the, the power was kind of sucked out of it. I am love reclaims that power for you and allows you to use it. It's the most powerful prayer that, they, that there is. Okay, so any um, thoughts or questions about any of that? Can you see, the reason I do these teachings is can you see how it all connects? how the dots connect, and how actually it's always been there. The truth has always been there. It's just been obscured. We've all been exposed to Christian teachings. But was it ever clear to you? Probably not, until until you get it reinterpreted and you, you see the essence of what was really trying to be communicated. It, it got obscured by all the misinterpretation, the dogma. Okay, so let's uh, go into the lesson then, uh, which is about vengeance. So, um, let's record this. So, this is uh, lesson 22. What I see is a form of vengeance. So um, you can read that. Um, who hasn't read for a while? I think it's Lynn. So if you can read that. What I see is a form of vengeance, the alternative, and then just read this um, first slide. Courtesy of Elaine, by the way. Thank you, Elaine, again, for sending me these. Um, which were created by a course teacher, just sort of helpful visual images to try and help us understand the lessons better. Yeah, so, what I see is a form of vengeance. What I perceive is a form of vengeance. By projecting our anger on it, we are blaming and condemning the world. Yeah, and then number two. The mirror, the, <clears throat> the world is upset with us and wants, wants a vengeance on us, which means we see it poised to attack. Hmm. And you see the mirror punching you. Mm. Um, quite well illustrated, actually. Mm. So uh, that's all the world is. The thing is, it just doesn't look like you. If you could see that it was your own reflection, because it looked exactly like you, and you go, okay, well, I'm not fooled. But the ego, being cunning, dresses it up as someone else. So it doesn't yeah. look like you, like someone else. <laughs> yeah. It's very, all very clear. So now it's someone else punching you, and you go, well, that's not me doing it to me. It's someone else, because they look like someone else, and they seem to behave like someone else. They appear to be someone else. They have a different body. They have a different identity, a different, quote, life. So they're someone else, and they're hurting me. But actually, you know, what we've got to do is correct our mind and realize, no, that's just me. It's me in disguise. It's the same me, just taking a different form. 
So don't be fooled by the form, which is, of course, what the ego is always trying to do. For, fool us with the form. Oh, it is really someone else because they've got a different form. And then number three, so within this thought system, our only option seems to be... Our only option seems to be to launch a counterattack in our own self-defence. Doing this, however, means that we are once again projecting anger upon the world, which leads to again seeing our anger staring back at us in the form of vengeance which leads us to defend ourselves through further attack and on and on it goes. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's how the world, that's how the ego system works. Yeah. The anger is, yeah. is, is apparently self-defense and you want to project that anger on the world. And you see your anger staring back at you and the more you do that, the more it happens. And the more you get caught up in the vicious circle, as he says, to read that quote from the, the text. Oh, the screen. Oh. Can you read it? This becomes yeah. an increasingly vicious circle. This becomes an increasingly vicious circle until he is willing to change how he sees. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and, and people his entire world. People his entire world? Um, apparently, that's, I, haven't, I haven't checked it. So people is, um, is, is how the world, the uh, ego, um, it, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so it peoples it peoples the world with these figures these dream figures that, that are playing out this vicious circle of attack and defense yeah attack defense counter attack when you get angry because you feel justified in your anger because someone's attacked you you just feed it you just carry on you know just go around and around and around and you have to you have to be mindful and and say no i'm not going to play that game because it's it's pointless it just sucks me in to a game and i feel terrible if i get caught up in anger and attack and defense i, I don't feel good mm -hmm. so so don't go there yeah and avoid it it's, it's tempting this is no 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 there you know you you've been unfairly treated someone's really attacked you you need to defend yourself, and off you go again, and you get back into the wheel. I had a situation recently with the, the landlady, and so we had a, an argument a few days ago, and then today she was pinging me again, messaging me, and I could feel myself. I want, you know, the ego's like, okay, juicing you up for a fight, right? You know, here we go again. This has been quiet for a few days. Here we go, and I was like, no, you know what? I'm not going to fall for that one again. I just went no comment. <laughs> so I could say something, but I won't. And then she tried. She was trying to suck me into it. Oh no! You just said that it was like passive aggressive. I just said no comment. <laughs> I said no comment. You know, so you interpret it however you want. But she wanted to fight. Me. It was like wanting to go into this attack defense because it, it energizes the ego and. I, and it took a lot of resistance to say no. I'm not going to do that. That's that's the vigilance. That's the mind point. You know, that's 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 why we do it. To stop us to stop us being sucked into this absolutely pointless game. <laughs> when you see how stupid and pointless and futile it is, you know, then then you may be willing to let it go. But we we've all done it yeah it's it's very it's very powerful you know that game is really different that ego's game that keeps us in the keeps us coming back over and over and over again as humans and those emotions seem to be very strong and they 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 cause us to act 
in you know in in ways that are not helpful but that 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 um perpetuate the cycle and then that's you know that's how the world works look just look at the world and and all the you know the anger and the dream of the what goes on in the world it's insane there's always a war going on somewhere can you ever remember a time when there was no war no there's always been one hasn't there yeah oh you know the world's coming to an end we've now got well first it was ukraine now we've got israel it's like well nothing's really new it's like it's the same old stuff there's always been a war somewhere and then you know something else breaks out and just when you think it's peaceful then the ego creates some other drama because the ego can't stand peace and harmony. It has to create the, the dream of vengeance to perpetuate itself. So the cause is, is your own anger. And then you dream of being attacked. And all the attack in the world, you, you, you look at, you watch the news and you, you watch you know, a report on a war in Ukraine or Israel or wherever else, it's just your own attack thoughts being projected out and coming back at you apparently in the form of the breaking news of the world, the dream of vengeance that you're seeing. Yeah. So we're all responsible for that war because it's a mirror of our own attack thoughts. Obviously on a conscious level, you're not, you didn't go and decide consciously to create a war in the Ukraine, but it's the subconscious has created that dream of vengeance. Yeah. To trick you into believing in the ego story. And it's done it remarkably well. Most, most of humanity is completely fooled, aren't they? They get sucked into it. Mm. So you can watch the news from this perspective Reminding yourself that, you know, this is a dream of vengeance. What I see is a form of vengeance. And it can be a great mind training exercise. Try it. Yeah, well, watch the news, but I'll do it consciously from the perspective of this. Okay, what I'm seeing is a dream of vengeance. What I see is a form of vengeance, but it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, so um, let's let's go into the. Uh, oh, hang on. There's just a quote here. So there's brilliant, brilliant diagrams. Really, you know, you see the real me, and then you get the past and the the false, but um, the true, the true self, the true me, which is 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 kind of shut out from this. It's it's obscured and it's trying to come in, but in the dream of vengeance it it can't come in if you believe in that dream then it's it's blocked out it's excluded yeah yeah which is why we've created the dream of vengeance is to exclude the truth of who we are yeah blocks out love yeah and so we just got to be aware that that's what the world is designed to do the ego set up the system as a system of vengeance to show us that um, guilt and sin and fear and attack are real and love is is not. Love has been destroyed and is nowhere. And it's you know it's done its best job. It's done a quite a convincing job, hasn't it? As you look mm -hmm. at the world, you go, oh God, what an insane place. Where's the love? Very difficult to see it. Well, that's exactly the, what the ego is designed it to be. <clears throat> and so this just corrects all of this by reminding us that it's not real. Did someone else read that? Um, but Kung, if you can read this, uh, is it not joyous news to hear that it's not real? Is it not joyous news to hear that it is not real? It is not a happy discovery to find that you can escape. In this lesson, we practice this escape. We look around and realize that we are not seeing objective reality. We are seeing our own anger staring back at us. So you watch the news 
you watch a war playing out and these scenes of war and if you can connect that to your internal rage and you can realize that what you're seeing in the images of the world is just a projection of that rage then you're getting someone then you're realizing the cause of the world that you see which is essential if you're going to let it go quite shocking really you can't blame anyone else anymore it's like well you know it's my own my own anger that's that's causing this my own anger if i'm still angry then i'm causing the the, the these wars and any conflict in the world i'm i'm at the cause of it because it's my anger that's doing it. quite shocking really but but in that shock you can awaken it's like shock, electric shock therapy to wake you up. And um, they, they used to use it with um, people who had mental illness to try and kind of clear their sanity. It's the same idea. Okay, you're insane because you're caught up in the dream of vengeance, believing in your false self. And uh, now you need a shock to wake you up. Shock is see that this is your own... This is your own doing. You created the war in Israel and the Ukraine. All the all the pain and the suffering and the the death of of of, of, of you know of that war is in your own mind. But it doesn't have to be so. The choice to continue to allow that or to let it go. Okay, so uh, Kim, if you could read this in the next one, number one, please. Today's idea accurately describes. Okay, Kim, are you there? Maybe someone else. Um, Elaine, if you can read that. Number one, today's idea accurately describes. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. Having projected his anger onto the world, he sees, perceives vengeance about to strike at him. His own attack is thus perceived as self-defense, perceives. This comes increasingly vicious circle until he is willing to change how he sees, perceives. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. <clears throat> what peace of mind is possible for him then? Mm -hmm. So what's um well, it's just about the projection of our anger onto the world and then we see vengeance about to strike us and so we see our attack our own attack as self-defense and then it becomes a vicious circle Otherwise, if you don't, then it's just going to preoccupy you and the entire world. So peace of mind's impossible. Mm. So it becomes an increasingly vicious circle until we are willing to change our mind about how we see it. That's the turnaround. When you say enough is enough, I've had enough, it's too painful, there must be a better way, then you're ready to, to, to start the journey of awakening. Until that point, you just carry on doing the same thing over and over again, getting the same dysfunctional results, and that's what Einstein called the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And look at 
know, this thought system as it plays out in the world. I think we'll just do the same thing over and over again. And then we get the same results and they don't work. And we think that's somehow sane. Well, this applies to um, so many, you know, should be leading us, like the leaders of this world. Do the same thing over and over again, get the same results. And don't realize that what you're doing is dysfunctional, that it doesn't work. So just keep doing the same thing. History repeats itself over and over and over again. It's insane, isn't it? Just keep doing it. Well, as we caught up in this thought system, which is seemingly very powerful and all pervasive, but it's just saying well, it doesn't have to be this way. And number two, it's from this savage fantasy that you want to escape. Anyone can read that. It is from this savage, savage fantasy that you want to escape. It is not joyous news to hear that is not real, that it is not real. Is it not a happy discovery to find that you can escape? You made what you would destroy. Everything that you hate would attack and kill. All that fear does, all that you fear does not exist. And what's he saying in that one, in summary? It's basically freeing us to say that, you know, all that cycle doesn't really exist. Um, it's just only our, our, prote our projection. And whatever it is that we're getting, that seems to be coming from the external. It's just really, you know, our fear. Mm. We made it all up. We made what you would destroy, everything you hate and would attack and kill. <clears throat> kind of bizarre. You, you hate it, you want to attack it and kill it, and yet it doesn't even exist. So what are you hating and trying to attack and kill, really? You hate truth, yourself. Yourself. <laughs> That's what you're doing. This is crazy. When you understand, how intelligent is that? This is so stupid. This is why Yeshua says this is totally insane. And you're likely to, to do exactly what harms you. If you believe this upside down thought system, you, you're likely to just harm yourself rather than help yourself. But fortunately, you know, what I love about this course is he's telling it straight, right? He's not sugarcoating anything here, is he? He's giving it to us straight and saying, okay, this is what you believe. Just look at it. Spend a bit of time looking at this very honestly. Because only when you really look at it will you want to let it go. When you see how, how horrendous it is, how and how pointless and how hopeless, then what other choice do you have but to let it go? Does this thought system lead anywhere? Is it going to help you do anything other than suffer? Nope. Yeah, so what's the point of it? <clears throat> and yes, just trying to teach us and help us to see for ourselves that there is no point. Which is why we need to let it go. It's the only sane thing we can do.
Okay, so we'll do a bit of um, practice on this. Be short, short practice. So um, let's do an, maybe a ten-minute meditation. Done the read already. So first. Closing your eyes, taking a nice deep breath in. Make sure you're sitting comfortably with your back straight, feet shoulder width apart, and cross your legs. You get into the posture to start with. Take a nice deep breath in. And the nose, and notice how the stomach rises. Chest rises. Push the stomach out. Subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. You clench the sphincter muscle to lock the energy in. Pull the energy up the spine into your heart center. All the way up into the crown of your head. It's pausing at the top of the inhale. Smile. Scan your mind. There's any thoughts, particularly any thoughts of anger, upset, even a minor irritation, such as sure is just a cover for intense rage. So notice any of this. Remind yourself that I see or perceive only the perishable in this. I perceive nothing that will last. What I see or perceive is not real. What I see and perceive is a form of vengeance. And then ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see and perceive? The answer is surely obvious, is yes, sure. So exhale on that answer. You know the answer. How can anyone in their right mind want to perceive a world like this? A world of insanity. In which nothing lasts. Everything dies. And nothing is permanent or eternal. Nothing is really real, and everything is just a form of vengeance, i.e. a form of attack on yourself. Take vengeance on you for your imagined sin. So consider, is this the world I really want? to see or perceive. And the answer is surely obvious. So feel that answer resonating deep within you. It's the same answer as class in the name of your game exercise, flipping and flop exercise. Also lies in the realization that I am, I am love. I am love, say that. One more time, I am love. And breathe in the very essence of that love. So 
So anchor the state in. Feel it in your heart. Put one hand in your heart. Breathe it into every pore, every cell, every muscle of your body, every part of your mind, fiber of your being is in the love. Claim it with the statement, I am that love. I am love. Sometime in the past or the future, but right now. I am love. Surely that's the most obvious answer to the illusion that the world is vengeful, angry, fearful world. I am love, said time allowed. Connect with it, breathe it into every pore, every cell. Muscle of your body, every part of your mind, every fiber of your being is in this loving awareness. And just rest here for a minute or two in this loving awareness. Nothing else to do, nowhere else to go. Else to do, nowhere else to go, just be in the love. And feel into that loving awareness as I am love feel like. Feel as the antidote to all anger, all fear. And the guilt that underlies them that cannot exist. And just coming back from this loving awareness, you bring yourself back into this world with the breath, awareness of the body senses. And then count to three, you're going to open your eyes and we practice this exercise in the external form. As you do that, so one, just breathing in, noticing how the stomach rises and the chest rises and the subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. Pause at the top of the inhale, smile, scan your mind. Notice any thoughts, emotions, and related to body sensations going on. Mind yourself that whatever it is in form, you see or perceive only the perishable, perceive nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I perceive is a form of vengeance. And then you're going to open your eyes and just practice this in the external. So as you look around the room, just let your eyes randomly move from one object to another. Quite slowly, don't select anything or avoid anything. Just whatever your eyes happen to rest on, say, I see or perceive only the perishable. I see and perceive nothing that will last.
when I perceive is not real. And the definition of reality is permanence, makes that point in the text. If it's real, then it will last, it's permanent. If it's unreal, it's impermanent. And that's how you define reality. Is it permanent or is it impermanent? So if it's impermanent, then it's not real by definition. What I see is unreal. What I perceive is a form of vengeance. What I perceive is a form of vengeance. And then ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see and perceive? The world of vengeance, hatred, fear, attack, all continuously out to get me. Answer is surely obvious that no one in their right mind could want this. So to restore yourself into your right mind and correct the error, just say the one simple truth about yourself. Again, one more time, say, I am love. I am Love. And one more time, I am love. That's how it is. So just anchor that state in, use the lesson, and I am love to remind yourself if you need to. And um, I wish you all a very, uh, a very lovely evening. I think um, we could. Uh, there's some text to do, but um, given the lateness of the hour, I'm imagining no one wants to embark on that. And John is is um how did his band practice so um shall we uh shall we leave it there yes yeah. thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm really tired now so but thank you for everything and thanks everyone mm. Mm. yeah very good, good. Everyone. very good yay <laughs> very good very yeah, good yeah yeah well done man. Uh, it's really uh well done it's a good job i'm glad you joined and uh yeah it's just uh another part of the turnaround and the awakening that you you started a couple of weeks ago, so yeah next level yeah thank you everybody yeah yeah, Namaste. good night. See you all soon. Namaste. Okay, everyone. So, yeah, just uh, tomorrow, before you disappear, Elaine, um, tomorrow oh, yeah. we start at um, 1 o'clock. So, yeah. Uh, UK. So that's that's yeah, 3 p.m. That's fine. Yeah. Time. I'll try to join, but I'm um, leaving here tomorrow, so I've got to pack up and yeah, do, do can, a lot here, but I'll see what how it goes. Do what you can, yeah. Um, I've got to... Um, be finished by about 20 past four so i'm started start on time that'll give us um just over three hours to we can do some text tomorrow yeah okay i'm actually moving here at hopper so yeah, yeah. okay all right no thanks you can't do it that's fine you've, you've done well today so. yeah. just thanks. 
carry it with you, love. Whatever's happening yeah, tomorrow, mm. I am love. And you just bring love. it back. And you take a breath and you feel that presence. And it only takes a few seconds to correct. Yeah. Okay. I can feel that. Pause. All right. And connect it again. And then you carry on. And it only needs to take a moment to do that. Will do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Namaste. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming. See you soon. All right. So um, that is a, uh, a wrap for today. Thank you to uh, everyone who joined. Uh, well done to Lynn for going through the uh, flipping your flop, name your game, flipping your flop exercise, which wasn't recorded, but if you'd like to uh, know more about that process, how you can use it to help you transform your own mind and life, then do join us for the next masterclass I'll be running um, quite soon. So go to theaolg.com to find out more about that. The link is below in the uh, text box associated with this video. You can also... Um, Go to lifepool.com, that's L-I-F-E-B-U-I-L-D.com. You can see the uh, spelling of that on the screen, lifepooled. Um, so lifepooled.com, and that will uh, get in the links below to uh, get sent a, a telegram message with the daily quotes. So the quote that I sent you today was an example and the teachings around that. And then there's a daily lesson from the Course in Miracles workbook. And then finally a, uh, a short mini meditation or breath break, as I call it, to practice the lesson. You get sent all of that completely free via Telegram. So just go to lifepool.com, put in your, uh, your name and your mobile number that you use for Telegram, download Telegram as well. Um, I'll send you an email with more details about how to do that and you can uh, get access to all the material free. And then finally, um, if you enjoyed this uh, this uh, live session, you can be notified whenever we go live, which is six days a week. Let's go to lifebuild.com to do that. It's L-I-F-E-B-U-R-L-D. Sorry, um, just to subscribe to the channel. Um, so... Uh, Hit the subscribe button and you'll be uh, signed up and get notified by YouTube whenever you do that. So thanks for listening and I hope to catch you on the inside soon. One of the masterclasses, one of these live sessions, um, which is where yeah, transformation happens. It's a field of transformation. So I want to take this to another level and join us in the Zoom room, join us on the program. Join us in the masterclass soon to find how that all works, how you can benefit. Thanks for listening and uh, hope to catch you on the inside soon. Namaste. Which means the uh, true transformed self in you. I just honor that same true transformed self in you. Peace.